This is part two of the safety video where I walk around the shop and point out items. Uh, here we have all these engine stands and some over here. Uh, what I want to point out here is if you are taking parts off an engine, there's a, there's a lot of weight right here being supported by these bolts. So I do not want to see you, if you have to loosen something here with a ratchet, I don't want to see you like and making this whole engine like bounce on this stand like at the front. That's putting a lot of stress on these bolts and there's no need for that because that's just increasing the risk that something go wrong if they snapped and then the whole engine comes down. Don't put your body inside of here. So the whole idea is you're going to keep your body outside of there while you're working on the engine. There's no need for you to be stepping inside here because if we were having to take out this pin and flip this engine over, that's a lot of weight that's suddenly going to shift its balance and go like that. And we don't want that. And if you happen to be holding this like this at the time, that's going to come around and get you or pull your arm around. And if you had your leg under here like this, wow, imagine that thing slipping down on you. That would do a lot of damage, okay? So be careful around the engine stands. Um, remember, there's a lot of weight there. What I want to do is go over here to the battery area. This is where we keep our electrical cords. If you find an electrical cord missing, let's see here, are they all good? So, for example, this one's good, it's got all three prongs. If you find one of the prongs missing or damaged or bent, don't use it. Show it to me so I can fix it. Uh, make sure after you use the booster here, you plug it back in afterwards with that blue cord so it can always stay fully charged and do not make sparks around batteries because what's inside a battery um, is sulfuric acid and when it's being charged it creates hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is very explosive and if we create a spark around it it could ignite the hydrogen gas and the flame would go back inside through the vent and could actually cause an explosion of that battery and imagine sulfuric acid, lead and plastic flying everywhere at high speed. You know That's going to do basically a lot of damage to you. Uh, this is where we keep our lights. Uh, sometimes these need plugging in to be recharged and the, re the charging, um, here's the, uh, the adapters here to charge them. Okay. Uh, oil dry. This is our extra oil dry and if you're wondering what is oil dry, well what it is, it's kept, oh my goodness, where's our, there it is. Alright, here's oil dry. Looks like kitty litter. Alright, just looks like kitty litter. It's basically the same stuff. It absorbs oil uh, so if we have a leak on the ground, say you're changing the oil and you make a big spill like over the summer oil leaked out over here. So I put this oil dry down, I'll take a broom, I'm going to wipe, I'm going to swish it all around, it'll soak up the oil and then as long as it's not saturated, I'm going to put that all back in that yellow bin over here that I just showed you and it can be reused. If it's just a tiny little spot where say there's a little bit of oil, just grab a rag wipe it off and then throw that rag in the red container that I showed you earlier over by the sink. All right. Okay, over by the Varsol tank. Over here. This is this is our wash basin for washing grease and oil off metal parts. There are gloves. There's a face shield. There's glasses. There's an apron, so I want you to wear those when you're using this so it protects you from the it is a hazardous product all right so we want to make sure you're safe so please wear those when you're washing and uh, here's where you plug it in here's where the switch is to turn it on but make sure this hose is not pointing outwards because when you turn that on whoosh right at you so make sure it's pointing in all right before you use it there's brushes here to wash your stuff with when you're changing the oil I put this plate on here and fasten it. You're just going to put your bucket right on top because I don't want the oil to drain into this because it's hard to get out. Uh, if you need to change the oil, grab a bucket here. Before you drain the oil though, make sure this bucket has no holes in it, no leaks. The last thing you want to do is drain oil into a bucket that starts leaking from the bottom. This is where we put our waste oil if we actually had to throw oil out. So we just lift this up. Okay and pour the oil in there. Uh, water hose, you're going to find most of the time this water hose is actually sitting like this because every morning the caretakers, um, due to the water regulations, they have to run this hose for a few minutes to clean the system out every morning. So 
please be careful. This is always going to be here. And try not to step on the nozzle end. All right. So be careful about that. Uh, here's another air hose receptacle here. And there's a separate video on using the air hoses. So you can watch that. This box is important. This is the on-off switch. I just turn it on. And what it does is when there's a hose hooked up to the vehicle and we're running the vehicle, the carbon monoxide can then go through the hoses, which you're going to hook up. There's a separate video on getting it ready. They go into the ground. There's tubes that go through the ground. And then they come up this long one here and go in through this suction fan and out through the ceiling. Okay, so it keeps us safe. Make sure that it doesn't build up with CO in here. The, speaking of these hoses, I try to leave them underneath the vehicles like this so they're out of the way. Don't leave these doors open like that. If someone was walking along, they could twist their ankle if they fell in there. Tools could fall in there. Um, so when we're not using these, make sure they're always closed. Okay, what else we got? Uh, fire alarm. Heaven forbid there's ever a need, but there's the fire alarm pull activation lever uh, back here by the big overhead doors and the black door. Uh, little hand brooms, dust pans, big brooms, squeegee, shovel, whatever we need, it's right here. Get used to using them. Always clean up after yourself in the shop. Uh, if you had to take a tire down from here, please be careful. Okay, we don't need it falling on someone's head. Let's see, what else? Bolts, nuts, anything like that you need, it's in here. I have separate items in here that we use throughout the semester. Um, I already showed you the tool cabinet. Underneath the benches, I keep other items we need in terms of for projects. Okay, let's check our list. Let's see what I haven't shown on the list yet. So, I went over, tire machine, there's a video, wheel balancer, pedestal grinder, hand grinder, battery chargers, floor jacks. All these things have their own separate videos that I want you to watch. Parts washer, I went over that. Engine stands, I went over that. Waste cleanup, housekeeping, yep, making sure that aisles are always clear. If you take a tire off, slide it underneath the vehicle so it keeps the aisleway clear, please. Uh, shop air tools, separate video, hand and power tool safety, separate video, electric tools, safety rules. Okay, so that's all good. Um, hearing protection, I went over where that is in the cupboard over there. Plus also right here are some. Um, oh, anytime, just as a little FYI again, uh, if you had to do any kind of work on an electrical tool, always make sure it's disconnected. Uh, checking guards, I talked about that. Dangerous sparks. Battery, really quick, if you had to work out a battery and if we had to connect this battery, here's positive, here's negative. Always connect the negative last. It, so that way it prevents sparks um, in terms of possibly igniting fuel fumes. Uh, don't wipe your hands on the shop coat. So the shop coats that are in here, if your hands are dirty, please don't do this and wipe it off on yourself. All right, the whole idea is shop coats, you're still going to have to sit in a vehicle. And I don't want grease on your shop coat, then you sit in a vehicle. And speaking of that, please don't get in a vehicle if your clothes are dirty. We're going to treat these like they're a $100,000 Cadillac or whatever. All right, we're going to make sure that you guys learn to treat vehicles with respect. Uh, don't lean against work surfaces. It's very common where there might be grease or oil on here and you're wearing a nice nice clothes. So get used to not leaning on these. Even though they're nice and clean right now, they won't be that way forever. Okay? Uh, let's see, anything else I missed here? I do believe that we have everything. Air hoses. Or battery, fire alarm bell, clean shell brakes, used oil tank, um, main power, steel. Alright, well, you know what? I think we've done it all. 
So that's a little walk around the shop. So I expect you to really watch this. I expect you to really take it in so you understand where everything is. And I expect you to watch the videos relating to all the separate pieces of equipment that are on my YouTube channel so you're feeling comfortable with them. Because the safer you are, the more knowledge you have, the less chance you're going to get injured. And it's better for everyone, including you and me, of course, because I don't want you getting injured. And obviously, you don't want to get injured. All right? So take it to heart. Um, it is a working shop. There are a lot of dangers here, but if you respect the danger and if you understand the danger, chances are you're not going to be uh, finding yourself injured. Okay? So I know I'm forgetting something here. I just know I am, and I can't think of what it is. But oh, there's the front tool cabinet. Okay? That's maybe what I forgot to mention. And that is it. All right?